Hi everyone, we are Melina Torres and Tamara Fernandez. We are students of second language acquisition at the National University of La Pampa. Today, we are going to talk about statistical learning, from acquiring specific items to forming general rules, written by Richard Oslin and Elisa Newport. Statistical learning is a mechanism that enables adults and infants to extract patterns embedded in language and visual domains. It operates implicitly without instruction through the exposure to an input stimuli. However, much of what learners must acquire about a structured domain consists of principles or rules that can be applied to novel inputs. For example, imagine that you are a kid and your family gives you a video game without instructions. You will try to play with it and in the attempt, you're going to start learning how to play it. That also occurs in the real world. There is a structure in the world and principles that determine that structure. We can't learn the structure without gathering some input, but we can't wait for every potential structure to be available in the input before we make inferences about the rules of the game. Statistical learning in language and vision. The learner must select the correct structure in a given set of data without waiting forever and without the aid of an instructor. Adults and even infants are quite good at extracting the organizational structure by merely observing or listening to the input. They demonstrated this powerful learning mechanism in an early study in which they investigated whether a month old infants could discover the words in a stream of speech when the only available source of information was the probability that certain syllables occurred in a specific temporal orders. They heard a continuous stream of speech sounds comprising four randomly ordered three syllables, nonsense words, with no pauses between the words and no pitch or duration based cues to signal the location of word boundaries. What defined a given word, therefore, was the fact that the first syllable was always followed by a specific second syllable and the second syllable was always followed by a specific third syllable. In contrast, the last syllable of each word was followed by a number of different syllables, that is to say, the first syllables of any of the other words. In a post-exposure test, the infants demonstrated their ability to learn which syllables formed words by responding differently to trisyllabic sequences that formed a word. After listening to a continuous stream of syllables for only two minutes without knowing whether where words were present in the speech stream, the infants managed to discover the correct underlying structure through mere exposure. Safran et al. 1996 suggested the term statistical learning to refer to the process by which learners acquire information about distributions of elements in the input. In this experiment, the elements were the syllables and their distributions were the statistics of how likely these elements were to occur in relation to one another. Thus, statistical learning is a powerful and domain general mechanism available early in development to infants who are naive, that is to say uninstructed, about how to negotiate a complex learning task. These results show that a statistical learning mechanism enables learners to extract one or more statistics and use this information to make an implicit decision about the stimulus materials that were present in the input. This ability is important for learning which syllables form words for estimating the number of peaks in a distribution of speech sounds and for discovering which visual features form the parts of a scene. Some studies have documented that infants can make the inductive leap from observed stimuli to novel stimuli. Gomez and Gherkin presented 12-month-olds with short strings of nonsense words. These words formed categories similar to nouns, 
and verbs, and they showed that although they were unfamiliar words, they were able to generalize that repetition rule and then recognize the words as familiars. Marcus Vijayan, Bandi Rao and Vishton showed that seven months olds who listened to three word strings with a repeating word in either the two first or the two last positions were able to generalize the repetition to complete novel words. Some researchers have claimed that statistical learning and rule learning are two separate mechanisms because statistical learning involves learning about elements that have been presented during exposure, whereas rule learning can be applied to novel elements and novel combinations. But an alternative hypothesis is that these two processes are in fact no distinct but rather are different outcomes of the same learning mechanism. For example, if the stimuli are encoded in terms of their salient dimensions rather than their specific details, the learners will appear to generalize a rule by applying it to all stimuli that exhibit the same pattern on these salient dimensions. These highly salient dimensions constrain the way in which the learner encodes the potential structure in the input, dramatically reducing the ambiguity about what the learner should attend to. For example, returning to games without instruction, if the gamer shows that after a high-pitched sound there is a thread, the gamer will try to avoid that situation in order to continue playing safely. So, we can say that learners rapidly acquire the patterns among elements that follow each other. Although perceptual cues can serve as powerful constraints on statistical learning, perceptual salience is not how much rules are defined in the natural environment. For example, all chairs have some perceptual similarity, but it is the function of the chair, not its form, that defines it. What allows a naive learner to induce a general rule that applies to a set of elements rather than just one instance but has no perceptual basis? One possibility is that learners are sensitive to contexts that signal this important distinction. They acquire rules when patterns in the input indicate that several elements occur interchangeably in the same context but acquire specific instances when the patterns apply only to the individual elements. For example, Shu and Tenenbaum have shown that if children hear the word glim applied to three different dogs, they will infer that glim means dog. In contrast, if glim is used three times to refer to the same dog, children interpret it as the dog's name. The same contrast between learning items and learning rules can occur for syllable and word sequences. Findings showed that it was the consistency of context cues that led learners to generalize rules to novel strings, and it was the inconsistency of context cues that kept learners from generalizing and led them to treat some strings as exceptions. The key point here is that in terms of the reliability of context cues, statistical learning and rule learning are not different mechanisms. When there are strong perceptual cues, a statistical learning mechanism can compute the regularities of the repetitions. That is to say, they are either present or absent, or of the elements themselves, for example, the particular syllables. And where there are no perceptual cues, the consistency of how the context cues are distributed across strings of input determines whether a rule is formed or whether specific instances are learned. According to this, statistical learning is a single mechanism whose outcome applies either to elements that have been experienced or to generalization beyond experienced elements depending on the manner and consistency with which elements are patterned in the learner's input. 
Importantly, this balance of learning is accomplished without instruction through Mary's posture to structured input. An extensive literature in linguistics has argued that languages of the world display a few highly common patterns and has suggested that languages learners will fail to acquire languages that do not exhibit these regularities. Some studies have shown that both children and adults will readily acquire languages that follow the more common patterns found in natural languages. Other artificial language studies have shown that even adult learners preferentially learn languages that follow universal linguistic patterns and often alter the languages to be more in line with these universals. In adult learners, these alternations are very small, but such changes can accumulate over generations of learners, shifting languages gradually through time. What is clear in these studies is that statistical learning is not simply a veritical reproduction of the stimulus input. Learning is shaped by a number of constraints on perception and memory, at least some of which may apply not only to languages but also to non-linguistic patterns. Summary and future directions. Studies of statistical learning have revealed a robust mechanism that extracts distributional information in different domains and across development. There remain two fundamental challenges for the future. One, to provide a comprehensive theory of the statistical computations that suffice to explain such learning. And two, to understand the neural mechanisms that support statistical learning and determine whether or how these mechanisms change over the development.